Hey guys, this is a live show here looking at the WrestleMania 37 betting odds. Before we start, let me run through the ad reads here because we are simulcasting on the day sheets and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network as well. The Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk-free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at wynnbet.com and download the app today. Also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Odds Crowd has a ton of free fantasy betting contests, including a 2K season-long MLB contest and a $500 weekly contest. Download the app today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. At sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Betman Vegas is the home for free daily picks from the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It's like YouTube for sports betting. Make sure to subscribe to our profile at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. And finally, we'll support you by Pixwise. Pickwise, Pixwise has free picks for every day of sport. Check out all their expert plays and betting picks at pixwise.com. That's pixwise.com. I'm joined by my co-host of the day sheets, Cav Manning. Hey now. And our special guest to run through these batting lines, he's the ex-writer of WWE at its peak, the Attitude Era Rock, Austin, Kane, Undertaker, Mankind. He also then went over to WCW and worked with the likes of Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, NWO, Bret Hitman Hart, and actually worked with Bret Hart in the WWE as well. It is none other than Vince Russo. What is going on, Mr. Bate? So you can give us some maybe inside info as to how these batting lines would go. In fact... You already told me off the air something that you'd been predicting, a big underdog uh, maybe winning uh, this, this this weekend. So, so yeah, we were... Uh, you know, you know what I didn't like? I'll tell you what I didn't like. I'll tell you what, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I'm going to say it right now. The way they were pushing Lashley, the way they were building Lashley, I was like, no way, no how are they going to take the belt off of Lashley. They, you know, they're going to have Drew push Lashley. I mean, a chase Lashley, and that's going to happen. But I'll tell you what I did not like. I didn't like Drew cutting that very emotional promo about his mother with the chemo and the cancer and all that stuff, which was very emotional and tugged in my heartstrings. And then you're not going to put the guy over. I don't, I don't, I, I, I didn't think he was going to go over. I think they're going to milk this for a while. And I think that's what they should do, but I don't think Drew should have, uh, God, I wish you wouldn't have cut that promo, you know, uh, knowing he's not going to go over. Um, in case you're wondering, watching on YouTube, my son here, Austin is sitting next to me. So, uh, uh, he's sitting next to me because last year during the pandemic, we were supposed to go to WrestleMania and we weren't able to go. So I was sitting there. I put, I gave him 50 pounds to bet with to make WrestleMania a little bit more watchable because it was in the performance center with no fans and it seemed like it was going to be boring without any action, even for a nine-year-old. Uh, and he has turned that that 500 pounds into 450 pounds, sorry, into into 500 pounds, into 475 pounds over the course of the last 12 months. So that's why I'm going to have him sit in because he has a track record. Um, better than most of the oh gambling. Oh my gosh, that's incredible, Austin. You're genius. There was a pay per view where he, him and nobody betted stuff that but um, that I won. No one won it, but I did. There was a pay per view where you got every one, wasn't there? Yeah. That's crazy. Bro. I don't think that's I've a- ever got every one on a pay per view. That's incredible. <laughs> All right, so we'll start running through these uh, running through these lines quickly because I want to leave a little bit of time. I want to leave five minutes to to get Vince's uh, insight into into baseball, which I think he's actually more interested in discussing nowadays. Um, so um, let's talk about the WWE title match. We already touched on it: Drew McIntyre versus Lashley. Now these odds were closer, and now Drew is a stronger favorite, which usually indicates that he's winning because people are putting money down on him. He's now one to two. Minus 200 U.S. odds and Lashley six to four, which is plus 150 U.S. odds. Yeah, they, they, they've pushed Lashley too hard, bro. They, they, there's no way. Listen, I know at this point they're incompetent. I understand that. But if you've put Lashley this hard and Lashley has, a, um, you know, he's he's gotten it over, bro. He's hitting it out of the park. You cannot take that title off of him right now. I don't, I don't, I don't care, bro. Yeah. Uh, Kyle. I'm. I was scared to death because originally I say, okay, when someone has a title that close, they like he just won it a month ago, and you're like they've pushed him and they have the opening and the entrance for him that is larger than life, 
And then they do this whole thing with Drew where I'm like, is this just to take the belt off of him and crown him at Mania? I would really, I would be bothered if they yeah. do this and have Drew win because I'm like, you you have something so hot, Leslie's a monster, but then the way they're doing it on TV does make you think that, well, Drew conquers the bad guy and does this. But we, as we also know, WrestleMania has now become, there is always a match in there to surprise everybody. It's almost like when they have somebody come back. So I'm hoping that's the one that everyone always thinks that McIntyre is going to win, and I hope he doesn't. But do you, what do you think that's going to feel like with the opener? Like if the if the heel goes over in the opener, do you really think like it's he's a heel heel that would deflate people? I don't think that it will be very deflating. I think they actually like Lashley. I think that yeah, crowd is yeah, hyped yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah, it's one of those. It's like I don't know if anything could deflate that crowd, especially the start. And they, this is the first of everything. They're going to be hot as hell that first night. Yeah. Austin? Uh, they're turning Lashley into a monster. If he loses, there's just no point in bringing him as WWE champion. There was no point. If he loses, there's no, there was no point in the first place in giving him a championship. Okay. They should have just uh, given, like, Miz lose to Lash, um, Drew, Drew, and then beat Lashley. But do you not think, like, it's because Lashley's a better opponent to have at WrestleMania? Yeah. He's a lot better opponent. He's like another Brock Lesnar. But you think now they've done it, he can't lose. Yeah, he can't lose. Okay, so that's three for three, three for Lashley. I, I'm still, I, I'm still going to take McIntyre simply just because um, I, I don't know where Drew goes from here if he loses. I mean, he, they can put him on the chase, but I mean, he's the challenger going in. So what's his, what's he chasing then after he after he loses his challenger? Um, the Universal Title match. So Edge is the favorite here at. 11 to 10, which is close to the 50-50 evens. Uh, Roman, 13 to 8. And Daniel Bryan is now the outsider at 3 to 1. I'll start with Vince again. I'm, I'm, I'm taking Roman, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Listen, uh, bro, I don't, I don't know how they book anymore. It's not traditional booking anymore. Um, but uh, Roman has been the hottest teal you have. Uh, you know, Edge... You know, bro, Edge, you know, with, with his uh, with his health and his history could go down at any minute. He's a lot older. How much gas is left in the tank? Um, I, if, if I'm booking, bro, I'm going with Roman and I'm staying with Roman. Um, I even though I'm wearing my uh, I'm wearing my Roman shirt marking out today, actually wearing a wrestling shirt. Um, I want Roman to win this. I was betting on Roman to win this until me and Billy did our wrestling show and Billy scared me. And he goes, it, it's very possible. Don't you think, uh, you know, Brian could win to, you know, end WrestleMania with the good guy on top. That scares me. And it does make sense. And it's another, you know, rah, rah, feel good. He got his way in there and did this. And this is like at the end of his career and everything. <sighs> I, I gotta go with Roman though. It's like Vince said, it's he's too he's too great. He's like the best thing on the all WWE right now going on. And um it's the one time that people I guess they hate him, but in the right way now. Um, but it's not the go away he he doesn't have now. It's the I wanna see him now. Now he's entertaining and interesting. Uh, awesome. Um, probably Edge. Cause he's going like absolutely crazy he's just destroying everyone and he's looking so good to win the championship yeah i actually agree with him uh because i don't know where edge goes from here like he's gone all the way through to win the rumble he, he, he's turned heel i i don't trust this company at all roman is the best thing that they have and i feel that they feel like they need to quickly turn him into a into a face i, I don't know why um i feel like Edge has turned very, very quickly because they need to fill that void that, that, that will be a void if Roman ends up um, turning face or, or goes somewhere else. It just seems difficult for me to see where Edge goes. I, I can see loads of places where Roman goes, even winning the belt back in a rematch or whatever. I just don't know where Edge goes from there if he if he loses. I mean, he, he could feasibly go back to Raw and then chase the the other title as a heel as well. But yeah, for me... Edge just seems it seems like a bit of a pointless journey for Edge if he if he loses. Um, and, and, 
Drew could go to SmackDown, Roman would go to War. Yeah, they could do they could do lots of stuff. But I mean, I, I think I, I'm looking for results really that are like as holding pattern as possible uh, until we get to until we get to SummerSlam. Like I could even see a situation where there's a lot of rematches from these matches. Uh, Sasha Bianca, Drew Lashley, uh, Fiend, and Orton. Remember, I reported that um, Orton Fiend wasn't going to be a cinematic match where everybody had it as completely cinematic. So if they're not doing the cinematic at Mania, that's gonna that's gonna carry on. So yeah, I, I'm looking for ways for lots of stuff here to, to carry on or or go into like rematches essentially. But I think night one could be your happy night where you open up with Drew and Lashley and you close out with the girls main eventing. And then like I even think Sasha and Bianca might hug at the end of the match and then Sasha will end up turning afterwards. I think you're gonna give people the happy, happy night on night one and then get back to business on, on night two. Um, we'll talk about our match next because uh, Bianca's a big favorite, one to four. You have to lay 400 on her to win 100, and Sasha is three to one. I'll go to Vince first. Yeah, I think Bianca, you know, on that. Yeah, well, you know, again, bro, it's they're very unpredictable the way they're doing things these days. But, you know, uh, you know, smart booking tells you that Bianca will be going over in this match. They've pushed her. Maybe Sasha's run her course a little bit. Um, I think it is time for uh, Bianca Belair. Uh, I'm actually going to go the other way. I, this was the one thing me and Billy were way different on, yeah. where he thought they would uh, do a babyface ending with the hugging and everything. I think Sasha is pretty much a bad guy now, as is. I mean, she's sneaking up. She's running away. She's doing the sneak attack stuff. Uh, I think she pulls out a win still here, and... Um, and if she, if she doesn't, I don't see that hug happening. I see her killing her at the end of the night because it's kind of almost a cliffhanger into the next night, though. So it's not like this is WrestleMania. It's over with. It's done. It's the first night over with, so you can kind of leave it on, on a note like that, I would think. But I would think uh, that Sasha's going to win it because I think it's almost too obvious that uh, Bianca would be you know overcome. I think they're throwing out too many stats for that to happen. Like, I knew this was going to be the, first, the, the main event. This is the first lady singles match to main event. It's the first main event with two black people in it. Um, the winner of the main event is guaranteed to be the first black person to win a main event. But they're throwing all this stuff out. Uh, Sasha Banks is the first person to be in a main event from who was born in the 90s. Like, these statistics and research that, that someone's pointlessly done from WWE side doesn't get out there unless you're planning to use it as a marketing resource for, for somebody like the, I mean, my sources know that these are taglines and things that they pulled out. Um, and I don't think they pull them out for no reason. It's pointless. Um, if you're going to do that. So I think with all of that, I just see this being very clean and happy and then getting back down to the story for the rematches. Uh, Austin. Um, pretty much the exact same thing Vince said, like, Everything he said. <laughs> don't humor him. Don't humor him, Austin. Don't do it. All right. So the, the other women's titles match uh, on Raw taking place on Sunday uh, is Rhea Ripley and Oscar. Exactly the same odds. Uh, Rhea Ripley one to four, Oscar three to one. So the bookies have uh, all both these women's belts changing. Um, Vince, is there any reason to disagree? No, absolutely. Uh, they, listen, last time Rhea Ripley was in at WrestleMania. I believe she did the job to Charlotte. They can't do that to her again. She's going to go over Oscar. See, now now Vince scares me because right off the bat, I was uh, picking Oscar on uh, the wrestling show that me and Billy do. and Because uh, I was like, well, Rhea keeps beating the shit out of Asuka. <laughs> Asuka's never gotten over on her yet, and she keeps getting yeah. put down. So I'm like, okay, now she gets her comeuppance and uh, wins this match. That's that's where I'm going with, and I'm like, ah, Ripley walks in and wins the belt. I don't like that. I I always say, give it a little time. But uh, I mean, she's been there. Obviously, it's the same company she's always been in. Uh, but I will go with Oscar. Uh, I'll go to him next before I, anybody says what he wants to say because he's done research today and he's got stuff written down. So Austin reports. Yeah, so we can read what you wrote. Um, I think Rhea Ripley will win because she's looking really good going into this match. And Oscar's beaten everyone on Raw. Yeah, so there's no opponents. Left. So, like, for Oscar to beat. Yeah, so they, they, yeah, he just thinks they need to freshen up. Yeah, I agree. I can't see any reason Ripley doesn't win. I'm surprised that uh, I had I, I, I said that on the last show on the brand that I said that Rhea Ripley was turning heel. 
Um, I didn't expect her to be turning heel before the show. They just don't know how to do anything. Yeah. Uh, you have to save these things for the actual shows that matter, or at least tease it for a while. They just seem to, 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 to do everything at the wrong time so that it has the least dramatic effect possible when you're trying to enhance it as much as you can. Uh, I don't want to talk too negatively about it because we're trying to get people to, to watch this show, and I'm sure there will be like some you know positives and, and some good uh, some good points here on the show, uh, especially that triple threat main event, which he's really looking forward to. But yeah, I mean some of this some of this mid card stuff is done really poorly. Um, we'll move on to the fiends and Randy Orton because it's very simple. I think we'll get the same pick across the board. Um, Fiend is one to ten, and Randy Orton is five to one. Yeah, you can't bring the guy back after burning him to death and beat him. So uh, 100% Fiend going over. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same thing. Fiend has to go over. And uh, Vince, I've been saying like to Billy, how horrible is this for Bray that he has to wear like this outfit with the, the glove thing has got to be the worst because it's like fake hands. So he's got this thick, fake burned hand. I'm like, this has got to be the most uncomfortable, worst thing. he. And, you, and you're wearing a monster movie outfit. In a regular match for everybody, I, I, I'm I, they got to get away from that quickly, and I don't know how the hell they do it. Austin, awesome. I think the fiend is so dominant and just so scary, so nuts. He can't lose. He got burnt alive, and he's come back from basically the dead. So he's there's not it's a one in a million chance for him to win. Yeah, I. I think they just go on to the cinematic match afterwards, and then I, I don't know where either one of them goes because this is a this is a baby face with no one to face, and um, it's it's almost like we we talk about this on podcasts and a poll with with the Undertaker, but they never seem that stuck as they are with, with with this guy. Like I just can't see who. I mean, you could create people weren't dead enough then to not make them back into stars again. Like Mankind and Vader and all these people could lose back then, but but here. In this situation, like, what are you going to do? Elias and the Fiend? Corbin and the Fiend? Like, who's going to give a shit? Who's going to believe any of that? It's not going to work. So, yeah, I think he wins this, but then I just think it's going to be a very difficult year for both guys. Um, where are we at? It's not worth us talking about Bad Bunny and Damian Priest and Miz and Morrison because that's like 1 to 20 odds. I guess just we'll discuss very quickly the expectations from this match. Like, Vince, how do you think this will go? I think it'll be okay, bro. I think it's going to be short and sweet. They're going to rehearse it through a million times. So Bad Bunny will know exactly what he has to do. Uh, so I I'm sure it'll be serviceable. I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. So here's what I'm dying to say to you. And actually, like, I spoke to some wrestlers this week, and they agree. What did you think about this guy coming in and actually cutting a bet. I don't know if you think you agree, but me and Cav both agree, the wrestlers agree, that he cut the best promo going into WrestleMania. I actually felt like he was legit and resonated with him. Like, did you get that? Or do you just think it was that this was, do you didn't think, think this was good? No, I thought it was fine, bro. I thought it was organic. Um, it didn't feel scripted. It felt real. It felt like it was coming from him. So absolutely, bro. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was very well done. It's funny that uh, Billy said that because that was going to be the thing I was going to mention that me and Billy talked about this. And I almost felt like I go, oh, I'm going to get attacked. I might be the only one who thinks this. But I go, Bad Bunny has the best promo in <laughs> of all these guys. I'm like, Edge, of course, I think Edge is probably better. But um, I was like, it was heartfelt. You could understand him. I, I always thought that was going to be a problem. Like you couldn't understand him with a thick, thick accent. It wasn't a bad accent. You could hear it. And it was... It was very real. It was like a man who was getting pushed around, and it was like, I'm not taking this. And me and Billy were right when we said it was going to be a tag team match the whole time, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, what's it? Um, yeah. I just think Bad Bunny and Dave will easily win. This. Did you like his promo on, on, uh, on Monday? Yes, it was a pretty decent promo, but I don't know why they did all this stuff. Why didn't they just make the tag team match straight away? I, I think like just because it, it, people are more interested in, in in seeing the singles, and I guess it would have like lured him in for a few weeks. I mean, they, I think they still think he has crossover appeal. You know, Vince, I spoke to my brother, and he knew because he works in the music industry. He knew exactly who Bad Bunny was. I should get him on the brand one week to talk about this uh, because he's booked. Bad Bunny, bad Bunny for a few events, 
He gets a mi- bad one. He gets a million dollars for an appearance. Jeez. So WWE are definitely getting him cut price to come on every week because he's not busy, like I was saying. Yeah. Uh, same, yeah. With that, same with that Logan Paul because I mean that he may come off as goofy, but actually he's pretty pricey to get in when he's busy. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, Strowman and Shane. The odds here are Strowman is the one to three favorite, and Shane McMahon is two to one. Uh, Vince, I mean, bro, you got to put Strowman over, right? I mean, you know, unless they're gonna what keep Shane on the roster. I mean, you know, you've got to you've got to get Strowman over in this match. You know, I mean, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, Strowman has to win, and this is the worst storyline I've seen in quite a while. And that's saying mm-hmm. something. I mean. I was telling to uh, be the worst storyline now is really bad. Like to be the worst now, <laughs> that's and going on. That's yeah. true, man. I, I yep. had said to uh, Billy earlier, Vince, when we were talking about this on our show. Um, I said, at least for storyline, they could have brought up Raw Underground and that he went in and started beating up all of Shane's guys, and that's why he's pissed off. I'm like, at right. least there is something in, and we would have had problems with that too. But it, it's compared to. I think you're a dummy. And did you see the reaction of Braun where he goes, after I win, you're going to look in the mirror. And you go, and he's like, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, what? what is this? What do you care? This guy oh, calls boy. you a dummy. And then he's doing the stuttering. Buh, buh, buh. I, don't, I don't have any clue what the hell's going on. I do enjoy watching Shane have a match. I will say it's a guilty pleasure. Your, he has good matches. Your story, your story was better for why they should have a match because Braun Strowman came into the Raw Underground and beat everybody up and then he got canceled. And what about Dabakato? Is he supposed to come and help? Is this the word that I've been hearing around? Yeah, I I think so. For my prediction, I think Shane will win. Uh, I think that it will be they'll build for something for Braun to do. They'll build not necessarily a stable, but a short term like group of guys that that he will have to go through. I think that Elias getting Elias on WrestleMania. This is going to be his role. Uh, then you've got like um, Jackson Riker. Uh, you could have Dabba Kato get involved in this as well because he lost to Strowman in the Royal Underground. So, yeah, I think that Strowman will look strong in victory, uh, strong in defeat. Uh, I don't think he needs to win. I think he'll end up getting Shane uh, alone in some other wet match. I think this will probably build to uh, to another match, so unfortunately. Uh, Austin? The complete opposite of what you said. Okay. <laughs> terrible. It makes no sense to me one little bit. Okay. What do you think? Does he think Brian wins? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. He uh, just like does that annoying, stupid train thing. Oh, that's awful! You picked up on that—the train noise when he runs around the ring. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so we'll move on to we'll we'll, we'll quicken up now because um, these these are this is getting down to the filler parts of the card, which is actually Biggie and Apollo is a story. Uh, so we'll, we'll discuss that quickly. Then we'll just run through predictions. Uh, Apollo is the slight favorite of four to six, uh, minus 150 US odds. And Big E is 11 to 10, which is plus 110 US odds, uh, Vince. I'm keeping it on Big E, bro. You've got you've got to figure out who you're going to go with and go with them. Big E is a big dude. Big E is a star. You know, I think they got him out of that ridiculous New Day gear and all that stuff. Biggie is a guy you got to go with, bro. You got to start getting some of these guys over. You got to leave the belt on Biggie. I'll go with Apollo to win this because how many 500 chances will he have? Uh, He's got that spear with the pair of balls at the end of it. Um, And we don't know what this, uh, you know, drum line uh, match will be. So it's a way to get out of it without having him lose cleanly so he could still look strong I, I, however this match is going to be it'll be some wacky way to to get the belt off of him so they both you know save face here but uh after a gimmick change and all that kind of stuff i would think uh they have to have apollo win uh sorry i'll go uh yeah i'm gonna go with uh I'm going to go with Vince. I I think that this is a Carmella Sasha situation again, where they built a character in with a new gimmick, but it's just to strengthen him up as a, as a challenger because Apollo couldn't challenge as Apollo. And there wasn't really anybody left here and they decided to put this coat of paint on him, but I don't think it will make any difference. And I think then they'll really struggle what to do with him because that will just be the same situation of Carmella's in Uh, Austin. Two things. Hmm. 
the exact same thing as Cab because he has every prediction that I have every time just before me. Um, he's looking like really strong, and I think he will win because like I hope he does win. Yeah, I, this is not what I want to happen. I know you want him to win. Yeah, everyone wants him to win. Vince, you want him to win? Who? Uh, Apollo. I don't. I haven't watched SmackDown in months, so I, I like. I honestly, I, I'm, I would want if I'm writing this show. Big E is my star, and I would keep Big E strong. Yeah, Vince starts like rolling out stuff in like that Nigerian singing match. Uh, I don't know. It's a Nigerian drum drum match or something. Yeah, <laughs> drum drum <laughs> drum drum. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, I'm like Vince. Meanwhile, SmackDown is the f- by far better show than Raw. I'm surprised you're you know suffering through Raw instead of trying to watch SmackDown. I look oh, forward I to get, SmackDown I get, actually. I get paid to suffer uh, through Raw. I don't get paid to watch SmackDown. I, so. I just do it as a <laughs> sadomasochism. I watch Raw. I guess that's all. Yeah. Um. So Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. Cesaro is actually the one to four favorite here. So I don't know if the bookies know something. I don't. Uh, Rollins is three to one. Just a um, quick prediction, Vince. God, bro, it's like Cesaro's so long in the tooth and he's been there forever at least. So well, I'll ask you the other question we asked on the show. Cab asked me this question. We'll ask you. Can he, if he wins this, which he's favorite to do, can he actually be re- rebuilt back up? Is it... Can you lose too many matches to be taken seriously? I mean, you're a writer and you... Yes, ab- absolutely, yes, and he has, yes. Okay. But at, you think- at, at, at least Rollins has won enough big matches to still have some credibility. You're not going to do anything with Cesaro at this point. It, 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 it's, it's, it's the same thing with Sheamus. You can't do anything with these guys at this point. It's way too late. I agree with uh, Vince. I, I think Cesaro is going to win this because they are trying to uh, pull him up from a nosedive. I don't think if he beat Roman clean, you would have belief. And fa- you'd be like, nah, he, this isn't going to last. You would just, it's too many losses, as we say. And the Sheamus thing, 100%, it's, all right, he's a huge, great looking, you know, fits the part and everything. I don't buy it. There's too many. It's too much uh, L's hung on him. Yeah. Uh, We'll talk about Sheamus next because he's he's taking on Matt Riddle for the U.S. title. Riddle is the the same odds, actually. So Riddle is the four to six favorite, and Sheamus is 11 to 10. You can find him at six to five, plus 120. Uh, Vince? Yeah, Riddle, man. Riddle's the up-and-coming guy. Plus, they've already beaten him way too much on TV. But he's the up-and-coming guy. He's the future of the company. Uh, Sheamus has been there forever. He doesn't mean anything anymore, nor will he. Uh, definitely riddle. Um, I'm going with Sheamus as kind of a reward because he did not get the main event, and I think this is his uh, here's your participation award and do it. The only thing that scares me is that he already beat Riddle the other <laughs> night. Um, but it almost looked like Riddle turned into a bad guy. <laughs> pushing Seamus afterwards when he was pissed off because he lost. Um, but I'll say Seamus just as a uh, a concession prize there. Yeah, I, I agree with the concession thing. Uh, I actually delivered I – I tweeted out to you, Vince, and emailed you. I produced a video this week showing you uh, um, a, a, a clip that Seamus recorded, a video promo package that Seamus recorded, uh, which was supposed to be as WWE champion, didn't air. I got sent it, and uh, I sent it to you. Be a brand exclusive. Uh, we can air wow. it. We okay. can air it. And then also, like, uh, a, a bit from a WWE documentary where he says that should have been the main event, and then he turns to Cesaro and starts crying. I saw that one. That one I saw. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for Sheamus. Uh, Austin, uh, this match, and I, you told me I forgot to ask you. He nudged me and said I forgot to ask him the Cesaro Rollins <laughs> prediction. So do both. Um. Rollins on the Cesaro match. Okay. Well, you get big odds if you want Seth Rollins. Three to one. Okay, I'm going to pick that. Okay. Um, And I have a whole mini description here. Okay. I think that Sheamus will win because he's been doing a bunch of other documentaries on the WWE network. And Matt Rodor is really dumb and goofy, not looking like he's going to retain the US Championship. He is dumb and goofy, but I think he's well. He's not just dumb and goofy. We we saw other things this week with the 
with all the drug references that they they snuck in with the new day. Did you with the with the uh, with with, Co- with Xavier and Kofi with their really great acting, like rolling their eyes and and everything. Um, uh, this is an automatic for me. Um, New Day versus AJ and Almas. I don't think AJ and Almas are in this match to lose. They're currently the one to three favorites to win it. I think this is still not short enough odds. I would happily put 600 pounds on this to win 200 back, 200 profit. I think this is so easy. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree, bro. They're, they're not going to put these guys in their match. The uh, first match for almost to beat him, that's not going to happen, definitely. And the uh, Grand Slam for AJ, please. Uh, I'll go with uh, AJ and Edwards James almost in this one, too. And uh, I think this is going to be a match where it's Haku doing all the work and Andre comes in for two spots and then gets back out and lets Haku do the rest of the work again. Agreed. Um... Yeah, straight up, uh, AJ and Omos. Okay, so I think that uh, Owens and Sami Zayn is the last match, I think, that, uh, that I've got listed here that I haven't covered. Uh, Owens is the one to four favorite. Logan Paul is going to be in this match. Uh, Vince? Well, from everything I'm hearing, Sami Zayn is one of the hottest things on that show. So, again, if I'm booking, I am keeping Sami Zayn hot. So I would I would keep Zayn over. Uh I worry with this Logan Paul thing, like they're going to want him to have a match and he would have to screw over uh, Owens to do this. And Owens kind of pushed him out of the way when he walked in the ring last week. Um, I was surprised that Logan Paul wasn't a a douchebag either um, when he came out there. I was ready to really hate him because I don't know really anything about him other than his big mouth usually when he's trying to promote something. Uh, I'll I'll stay with, uh, I think, Owens wins, but I am worried about the whole... uh, because Logan Paul was kind of not on Sammy's side, but if he's going to be around, uh, I, I'm expecting something. And uh, Austin, last one. You don't have to read it, just say. Cause... No, I'm not reading it. Um, about the Logan Paul stuff, Logan Paul is a complete goof on YouTube. He is terrible. Uh, this is Logan You can't put a YouTube video on a YouTube video. It's copyrighted. <laughs> but, yeah, but we get, but, this but we is get. what he does. He's opening... The a million dollar first edition Pokemon card. Yeah, he's I, opening Pokemon cards for nearly two hours. That's what he does. Yeah, I mean, so he is a goof if you want to, but I mean, he's he's a rich what, goof. Him, I, I don't get this whole influencer culture and all this kind of stuff, but that might just be my age. Like I'm now at the age where I don't get things. Like he wants to. He's got this um, Instagram channel and he changed and YouTube channel. He changed it from Austin's toys to Austin's toys and games and wants me to get involved with all this stuff, edit this stuff for him where he split screens his reaction to him playing. And one's just going to be the, I would never watch someone playing a game. It's like Twitch. That's That's what they do, I guess. Yeah. I I don't get it either. Yeah. That, that's what they, that's what they do. Unless they're dressed um, like Paige playing video games. Oh yeah. That's, but that, but that's, yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't think he's going to go down that route. Uh, do you want to talk about your stuff and then we, you can go? Um, Austin's toys. Austin's toys, yeah. Yeah, I have a bunch of toys. Yeah, so like, all, these <laughs> toys, all, all these toys behind. It's, Austin, it's Austin's toys and games now, Cap. Like I okay. literally just said, yeah. Austin. I play Fortnite, Minecraft. Yeah. So what you all just right. said, no one should ever watch. You want us to... Uh... <laughs> What? Well, I say, I say what well, no one should ever watch, but he's, but he's, he's got, he's, he's got it going, so he's into that. Um, but for my stuff, uh, I'm at the, obviously we are all at podcasts on a pulse. So if you guys enjoyed the Attitude Era, which was the prime time in wrestling, written by Vince Russo, we do a podcast once a month, so it's not one of these weekly things, and it's not, and just because it's once a month doesn't mean it's five six hours. It's an hour and a half or under every single month where we talk about the month that we're in. So. Uh, January will be January 97, February, February 97, March will be March 97, April 97 is the episode that's out now. There's only six episodes to go back and listen to if you want to catch up with everything. Talks about Vince getting involved in the wrestling business, how he got his role, and then all of the inside backstage going on, goings on with everything that's happening, plus recapping the best era in wrestling. That's Podcast on a Poll, and our Patreon page is podcastonapoll.com. Uh, my betting website is lockbetting.com. I've delivered 94 months in a row of consecutive transparent profit, and already we are eight days into this month, and we're already 1,500 pounds up. I actually gave Vince a, uh, 
a one a one hundred dollar a one hundred pound baseball winner the other day because uh, when I get when the baseball guy puts in those big plays, um, he has like a seventy five percent hit rate on those. So yeah, we landed a play on the uh, on the White Sox against the Mariners. We took the same play the next night, but he had it for half half the money, which is why I didn't send it to you. But when it's big, I will send them over to you. Um, Cav. What, where all, are you at? all my nonsense is at Lingus Mafia. That's my nonsense podcast. And uh, Billy, that show uh, for April is released on Monday, the day after WrestleMania, April um, 1997. That's when that will be out. Monday the 12th, the day after WrestleMania. Yeah, day after WrestleMania. I've been plugging it the 10th. I've been telling everyone it's the 10th so on the day of WrestleMania. Because yeah, so you, you were like, you're like, it's out now. I'm like, no, nah, not yet. Day after WrestleMania. <laughs> So, right. but all the other shows are on there. Um, we already have multiple months on there, so you guys can catch up. Uh, I get constant feedback of how good the show is and how entertaining. They said, I heard today from somebody that said, uh, you guys do a show that no one else does because you know Conrad has those other shows where they go after different subjects. No one does month by month of someone's career, and Vince's goes from Attitude Era, fantastic, and goes into the rival company that no one ever did. Fantastic. So that's what you're going to have to listen to. Vince, where can we find your other stuff? Yes, yeah, just check out my two podcasting platforms, Russo'sBrand.com and Patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. Uh, before we close out, Austin, you can go. Go play. Oh, go bed. Um, I, uh, before we close out, the World, World Series odds, Vince. Uh, I'll get, I want to just run through uh, your World Series winner, your American League winner, and your National League winner just very quickly um, because I know you get stuck talking about wrestling all the time. Uh, for the World Series, Dodgers favorites 3-1, to one, Yankees 11-2, to two, Padres 8-1, to one, White Sox 11-1, Mets 12-1, to one, Braves 14-1, to one, Astros 16-1, to one, Twins 16-1, to one, Blue Jays 18-1, to one, Cardinals twenty two to one. Everyone else is bigger than twenty five to one. Um, who do you like? I know you said to me you were looking for an underdog at the start of the season. Um, what, who do you like now? A few weeks in, bro. I tell you, I, uh, I I I made two bold predictions because they're two long shots. I have the Braves and the Blue Jays go into the World Series, bro. Really? Yes, I do. I broke it down. I broke down every division. I broke down the wild card, and I have the Braves uh, as the 2021 World Champions. Well, I got the Blue Jays here as nine to one for the American League, and over on the National League side, uh, we got the Braves at eight to one. So, I mean, that's big. Just if even one of them get there, who are you like more confident about? If you to take one, the Braves. But any reasoning behind it? Uh, I think they've been building, building, building the last couple of years. They should have beat the Dodgers last year. They were up three games to one. It is very, very, very hard to repeat two years in a row. I think the Dodgers are going to have their hands full with the Padres before they ever get to the Braves. And I think that's going to take a lot of steam out of them. And uh, if they do get past the Padres, um, I think, I think, Atlanta is going to have the momentum at that point. Uh, like I said, man, they should have won last year. They were up three games to one. Um, I don't think that's going to happen again. And I, I, think, I think the addition to of uh, I think the the addition of Charlie Morton um, really really puts them over the top of veteran pitcher with those uh, young rookies. I like the Braves a lot this year. Um, I used to live there as well. Yeah. Yes, I did. It. Yeah, and I'm not a fan of Atlanta by any means. Yeah, you and me both. Like great. Oh, that was the only WrestleMania I went to where I lost my bag. So, <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 I had to go to a Weld of Coke and buy some new T-shirts. Oh, geez, I, yeah. I, I already had it booked in the next day, so I went to Weld of Coke and bought like three T-shirts from there to get me through to the bag came back. Of course, Billy that. went right to a place called World of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think uh, there's a lot of value with, and not because I'm a Mets fan, that is a good value. If you want to just put down a couple for that, because that's that's a good odds for a team that's pretty uh, stacked, and they're young. But I really like the White Sox um, as well. They've been building up, and 
I do like the Padres. Padres, if uh, Tatis isn't really messed up after his shoulder popped out. Um, I like the the Padres. Uh, it is hard not to do those two um, number ones where it's Dodgers and Yankees. And then it's like, who the hell do I vote for in that? <laughs> who the hell am I going to want to win that one? Because I can't have the Yankees in, uh, living over here in the North Bay. I sure as hell don't want the Dodgers. Um, but you, know, you, support, you support, you live in San Jose, you support mm-hmm. the Chicago Bears, and then you support the New York Mets in, in baseball. Born in New York, then to Chicago, then to San Jose. So I was, you're born, you're raised with the baseball thing. My brother and everybody's still over there. Mets fans, uh, lived in the Midwest during that whole time during the good bears times. So I have all that Chicago with the bulls. And then hockey over here, if uh, you even want to mention hockey, is uh, the Sharks. So that's where I go. And, uh, you know, I like the Giants uh, as living here. They're, they were not one of those teams where you're like, oh, I'm sick of them. I, I could appreciate them. They were almost like my secondary team since I was over here. Uh, loved watching Bonds during that whole entire time where he was hitting. It, that was that was unbelievable. You would stop and and turn on the game when he was up. Or puttering yeah. around cleaning up, Bonds was up, you stopped. And I recorded uh, the home runs when that was tied. Like, I put in a videotape and got all that on there. So, uh, yeah, it was it, that was a joy. I loved watching Bonds and people who hate Bonds. I'm like, oh, go away. So, I, I love Bonds. Yeah. There you go, Bill. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay, so that that is your show. As I said at the top of the show, um, this is going to be simulcasting on the Dirty Sheets and Sports Gambling Podcast. Uh, I'm on a Sports Gambling Podcast every week. I host the Soccer Gambling Podcast, and we do the Dirty Sheets every week on Tuesday. Um, you can follow Cav at his Twitter account, which is at Lingus Mafia, and um, my wrestling news is at thedatesheets.com. That's it for us. Enjoy WrestleMania 37. Thanks for watching and for listening.